From the southernmost point of Dorn to the lands of always winter and Jon Snow's new home, and what is west of Westeros in the shadows in the east, this is Casterly Talk. I'm Kat Napsok for, well, it was going to be our regularly kind of scheduled news and cues type of show, but now it's going to be breaking news. Jon Snow returns. I put an exclamation point in the title to be hopeful, but let's be honest, that's a question mark. Joining me today, and kind of we can almost say as always, because, well, he's just a text message away, it's Alden Diaz. Alden, welcome to the show, buddy. Oh, the Ravens. The Ravens were flying last night. The Ravens were going uh, east to west coast, and here we are. I am a text message away. Now I feel like I'm a I'm a, a, a call the banners away because this is this is big. This is exciting. This is big. This is big. And I want to I want to acknowledge. I was texting with the uh, the wonderful Andres Cabrera late last night, uh, Ace in the place, and I was trying to get him uh, to get on today too, and it just couldn't work out a schedule. So uh, definitely would love to have Ace's perspective on this too, and others. But um, Alden, yeah, you are text away. Uh, this is why you're so easy to work with. I was like, you text me this this tweet, this information. I went on Twitter. Oh my gosh! And then I said, what are you doing tomorrow? And you were like, here, I'm here. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I called this our emergency small council meeting. Like something's happening. There's the, the bastard from the North has returned. We need to talk about it. Yeah. We um, need, we need to. We're here with our, 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 our books and our coin. Yeah. Look, I even busted out the old, uh, R plus L equals uh, J shirt. Oh, that's great. I purchased it about 2012 when I thought I was so smart. Like, Oh yeah, absolutely. Walking around grocery stores going, do you know what this means? Uh, but now we yeah. all know. At least we yeah. Can. All right. Let's get into this. Uh, we are going to set the scene a little bit here. Uh, we are covering uh, the story from The Hollywood Reporter, which is exclusive from James Hibbard. And I don't think the Game of Thrones world suffers from this as much as, say, Star Wars or other things you and I follow, where the, the news, this isn't some random blog. This isn't someone doing some trying to do some good work but has uh, hidden sources or anything like that I, i'm not throwing any shade to anyone trying to cover these kind of fandom worlds but this is a hollywood reporter this is james Hibbard, the guy who wrote the book sitting down right here fire cannot kill dragon great book i love that book um he's been in the game a long uh, long time game of thrones is uh, uh one of his specialities if you will to quote obi-wan slightly so uh we take the story as uh, as fact as much as it is that yes. said, Alden, before we dive in, we will acknowledge this is, uh, I'm reading directly from it, the network has entered into early development on its first sequel to its blockbuster fantasy drama, a live action spinoff series centered on fan favorite character, Jon Snow. This is what the Holland Reporter has learned. Kit Harrington is attached to reprise the role should, should, should a series move forward. So mm -hmm. Alden, we're just, we're just setting the scene here. We are, we are having a lot of fun. There's a lot of conversation, a lot of excitement. But this is, hey, this could something that could flitter away uh, like a like a raven leaving the nest uh, in, in a short amount of time. Um, this is early, early news. Yeah, absolutely. And as I noted in my initial reaction, it was a combination of immense joy. And we'll talk about our personal feelings uh, a little bit later. But yeah. it, I also was like, well, let's ask the Blood Moon team about development because yeah. they made it all the way to the pilot my friends everyone listening and watching perhaps you didn't know there's a hidden pilot out there that we will never <laughs> see at least at this stage for a series yeah. pre house of the dragon that you know goes yeah. to show in the television world like movies it's like if if we get going we we have a higher chance of getting going but tv you got to create then see if yeah. it will move on so early development could be anything from the higher up sitting around and saying what about john or it could be something like, let's get the art department together. Or it could be call kit. Like early yeah. development could be anything. <laughs> could be anything. Could be anything. But I think it's okay to, to open up the floodgates of our excitement, our imagination. Also, some things I want to say up top. You and I are going to talk about our gut reactions. I have a little bit of uh, confusion. Uh, it's good confusion uh, about the character. Is, is it and I as a fan? And, and let's also say this up top. You and I are fans of season eight other people mm -hmm. are not we're gonna get into that a little bit later on um but like all right do i even as a fan who loves Jon snow am i do i want to see this story his story would i rather see Arya's story i mean i'd rather see all of them but um i had some like okay interesting kind of intrigue i guess up top yeah i think that it is sort of the situation of i can't believe it's now even in talks mm -hmm. I, I liken this, you know, like we always do to Star Wars. I always thought if anyone was ever going to come back, it would be Kit. 
that was just just based on you know I don't we don't know these people, but based on the footage, based on things that have been said, it definitely feels like some of the young women of Game of Thrones, Sophie Turner, Maisie Williams, are at new stages, moving yep. on. Maisie gave that great interview recently talking about being Arya Stark and how that affected growing up and all these things. Yep. Whereas Kit was weeping on that set and afterward went and did that sort of like rehabilitation retreat after for his stress levels and anxiety and just all these things that again i don't presume to know him and i don't want to read too much into that but this was his thing in a way that you know harrison ford can walk away but mark hamill's always kind of luke um i feel like i expected this maybe 10 years down the road something like that to, t- you know, especially on that meta level of Tyrion saying, ask me again in 10 years. Yeah, right. But I cannot believe that in 2022, this is something that they went to mm-hmm. uh, at this stage. It perplexes me business wise, even yeah. if it really excites me character wise. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, we also feel up top, you and I do- talking off air, this could very well be the book of Jon Snow. And that could mean uh, we start with him, but we see so many other characters has already been, you know, fun speculation, uh, questions out there. Does it, you know, could you see Brienne of Tarth? Uh, did you check in with, with Arya Sansa? You know, how far do you go with that? And we're going to talk mm-hmm. about that in a bit. So, but fair questions to ask. And, and again, exciting questions to ask if this were to move forward. What does that mean? This is forward. We ain't going back. We're going forward. That's a wide open story landscape. And it's also embracing, with that story landscape, it's embracing what has been a huge, if not the biggest point of controversy in Game of Thrones culture, fandom appreciation, which is, oh, well, at a certain point, they stopped following the books. This would be that whole cloth, which is a very, very, like, there's no notes for this. There's no guideline for this. There's no let's adapt X, Y, and Z. This would be them just charging forward. House of the Dragon has source material. Duncan Egg has source material. There's the maps and the cultural details that they can spin yeah. into these other six projects, which James Hibbard talks about, that this is one of seven. A Jon Snow sequel, whatever that would be, has nothing that we know of nothing. to work with. And so it would be which whoever this showrunner is with full power. Full unlimited power. We're going to talk about who who we might think behind that because none of that has emerged as of this recording. Um, but before we get to all that, Alden, uh, you know, we're going to do a little thing called Send the Ravens. we got some calls coming in. You can call into the show via the Anchor app where the podcast is uh, uh, finds its home, I should say. So uh, these are some of our favorite and regular callers who just, I knew something. Alden had already texted me. I had already seen it on Twitter, but then I knew when I got phone messages from these two chaps that something was happening in the Game of Thrones world. Let's go to the first call from Eric Monroe. Hey, Kenny Cashley Talk. So breaking news. I just linked it to you on Twitter. There's apparently, I have no tr- no idea how tr- true, true this is, but there's apparently a Jon Snow sequel series in the works. I got to tell you, I, I'm absolutely shocked. My, my jaw is still on the floor. Again, I have no idea how true this is, but I always assumed if they were going to do this, it was going to be with Arya's character. But I guess um, if they are, it seems like it's going to be Jon. Um, it's intriguing, but I have to admit I am shocked. But I do wonder how long after Game of Thrones it will be set. Um, will it just be a limited series? That's going to be my guess. That it will probably just be a little a limited series and. My guess is it will probably be kind of maybe like a coda to Game of Thrones. So there you go, Ken. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Thank you, Eric, for the, the report. I love that. I feel like I'm getting calls from friends. It's like the old days when, you know, something would happen on Monday Night Raw. My friend would call me. Are you watching? Marty Jannetty came back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting times. Um, so we got another call, but let, let's address some of the things here. We're going to go into some detail, all of them. Mm-hmm. But Eric, a super fan like us, and when I say super fan, it isn't just that we love the show. We love this world. This isn't a world we want to leave. We're still moved by it. We're still inspired by it. We're still intrigued by it. We're still learning about it. We're still struggling with some decisions. We are love We love this property. Um, but Eric, like us, echoing kind of the huh energy. Mm. But a thumbs up, but a okay, let's see what you got. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, it's one of those things where, and I said my, my, my initial reaction in writing was, 
I, I'm trying really hard to not just throw a Jon Snow themed party right now. It's it's it raises so many questions. And this is the thing we didn't used to be privy to this stuff. This yeah. is this is so yeah. different, you know, and and this this culture like will let's say it goes series. We will be able to track it all the way from the rumbling stage all the way to a trailer. And it's it's just so hard to to temper your emotions and, and yeah, you know, mentality. Yeah. And look, I say, let it, let it rip, you know, have some fun and, and explore. And that's what we're, that's what we're doing here today. It's, it, it's, it's certainly fun, but it, yeah. It, yeah. Knowing a little bit more of how the, uh, how the food is made is, is just a sign of our times. We, we never put that back in the box, but yeah, I think like in, in my lifetime, the first time I understood what a spinoff or sequel series was, was the uh, failed follow-up series to mash called after mash. And as a young kid, remembering my parents gathering around the TV, turn into whatever NBC, whoever, ABC, whoever had it, um, uh, or CBS. That was it. We only had the three choices. Um, and and turning to it, and and I remember just being like, as a kid, eh, I don't know what I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what Klinger did after the war. I don't know. And it's always intriguing. You have characters you love, and you want to spend more time with them. They're popular. You still might be getting some numbers. Uh, hey, let's move forward. It's so tempting, but it can go wrong. It can go wrong. Yeah, I mean, it, it can range anywhere from uh, Joey spinning out of Friends to oh, a great example. <laughs> yeah, to, to Angel spinning out of Buffy, which is a positive example, or Frasier. Like, Frasier. It, yeah. It, yeah, it could be, it could be great. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, Better Call Saul. But it's just one of those situations where it is. I mean, Game of Thrones is a hot button issue. Like, it's a, it's a thing. We are we're season eight enjoyers, season eight uh, appreciators. But at the same yeah. time, it's that conversation of a lot of people were burned. But what is the power of intrigue? The power of this character? Because we're also taking it sort of if you take it categorically by character, which is a lot of how I appreciate Game of Thrones by arcs, mm -hmm. I processed that finale by really looking at the individuals and saying, how do I feel about X, Y, and Z? How yeah. do I feel about where the individuals ended up? Ranging from, does Bronn really deserve to be on the small council? All the way to John, where I said, that's perfect. And for me, it is. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So it's also about carrying feelings in and i i you know you know me i and i think you agreed not to speak for you but we reject this notion that game of thrones fell out of the public consciousness because of season eight hate and controversy i mean 12 million house of the dragon trailer views will yeah. tell you otherwise but and also every time that someone says that that's the public consciousness um yeah but yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it's i also think this is safe business what i'm trying to say is i think that john is safe business yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. There's something to that, even the selection of this character. And we'll talk in this episode a little bit about what we like. Uh, I'm still doing the great rewatch here on Castle Talk. We're mired in season four. Some schedule stuff keeping me from watching uh, rewatching as much as I would want. Um, but we're, you know, Jon Snow's arc is 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 one of my favorite things in the show up to the very last moment. Uh, so that's why even I, I think that's why I have a. I don't know how much more I need. I could just imagine it. But look. I'm always up for it. And uh, Frazier's a great example. I never, I've, I was a big fan of Cheers. I was like, of all the characters, that guy? And look what happened. So uh, that's our final Frazier reference of the day. Actually, I can't guarantee that. Uh, let's go to the next call here. We're going to send the Ravens again with our good friend, Donna Long. Hey, Cash, we talked this one to call in real quick about the Jon Snow spinoff show that's reportedly in development at HBO. We all knew this was going to happen eventually, but we all thought it was going to be Arya with Maisie Williams coming back and her journey west to Westeros. That still could happen, but now Kit Harrington comes back as Jon Snow, one of the three main characters of the entire series, one of the most beloved characters. That changes that ball game completely. Now, this is still like probably three, five plus years down the line, but right now, I want the most important conversation here is the shadows that's going to hang over this show. But there it is, this conversation has already started the season eight fixes show. Now, any of us might not believe that's going to be the case. That shadow is going to hang over the show so much. It's going to, I hope, not hurt the show. I hope, they, I hope this show can stand on its own two legs. And the, your quick thoughts about that. Thanks. Hey, Cash, you talk back again. I know this, I just talked about this not being a season eight fixture show, which I know this not going to be at all. But let's have this conversation right now. If this this has to evolve in there somehow in any shape or form, I don't know. It's resurrection, hey, it happened to John. Why not her? 
but she has to come back in some form or be had an underlying thing in this show. Because let's say she's the most popular character in the whole entire series and also one of the most popular characters in television history, her with John. Those two, their two stories are the Song of Ice and Fire. Their stories are so intertwined and so much parallels to one another. She has to show up somehow in any way. But hey, I don't know if that's the Danny fan in me coming out or the fanfic reader. Yes, I do read them. Yes, I know. But hey, they don't have to have this. They don't take 10 years to come out or decades at this point. Thanks. It's okay to read fanfic, Donald Luck. It's okay. We realize that. <laughs> so, Alden, that's, that's uh, two great calls from Eric and Donald. I love a lot of stuff Donald's saying. And, you know, I told you off air, so let's just you and I tee it high and let it fly here. No no real format on the show today. But I, I, I so I want to go where we want to go. But I think we should start with, that is kind of the, the big reaction. That is kind of the lead. Mm. See, our see, season eight feelings aside, you and I have always said we love it, but we can't ignore any conversations around it mm-hmm. and we can't ignore some really diehard show dedicated show fans who did not feel uh satisfied by the ending which is it's dangerous to say you know if satisfied and what do we want what do we need versus hey what are they giving us it's just a different conversation today though let's focus on this part of it uh they could fix season eight or they could add to it or they go back and correct some things what does that mean to you what do you think that could possibly be without getting into two specific predictions but how how would that even uh, how is this even going to work <laughs> it's a big question yeah i feel like there's a couple levels to that the first being that season eight despite controversy controversy exists within our spaces but yeah. from the perspectives of the people with the chessboard like actually positioning these projects and in this expansion we talked off air about the hbo saying well why not us why does star wars and marvel and star trek get to have four and five things going um we're in that age now season eight was an an indisputable smash success i mean they saw records it was an event it was a, a global thing you know i was in new york city before season eight premiered and it was everywhere every bus stop like this was a thing and i i'm sure they acknowledge controversy but it was always a it was also a mega win for them so yep. it's i think it's a different perspective to be the creators we also b don't know who would be running this and what their perspective right. would be yep. on season eight because right. you might have somebody do i want this no um who, who would have a let's fix mentality but also look at again we always compare things to star wars look at star wars where at the time of this recording we are in obi-wan kenobi a series which is fundamentally intrinsically tied with three films that were bashed lambasted dragged through the mud with the prequel trilogy there was a lot of early disney attitude around the time of the purchase of you remember those originals the ones you all loved they've gotten away from that which is great yeah um Will mm-hmm. there be some of that? Will this be way less fantasy, way more politicking? Will John be roped back in? Um, we'll talk about this, you know, yeah. more with a pulling me back in. Yeah. yeah, fun fantasy stuff. Like, is it is it a question of Queen Sansa needs something, and we yeah. really keep it into that house politics stuff? Who knows how they'll react? I I agree with the call. I don't think it will be a season eight fixer because yeah. I don't I don't see the game of thrones side of things to be a reactionary um feckless sort of brand it's not really in the i mean they've always stuck to their guns in a certain way yeah no they they have stuck to the guns and while i certainly would not view it and and would rebut the season eight fix it idea the season eight extension is is something that i think this absolutely would be uh mm-hmm. and it has to be into donald's big question of uh you know his is actually he, play, he phrased it as almost a statement i need to have danny in here i'm a fan um there's a lot of ways you could do that um you know i counter is dead but who knows what healing powers a troke on maybe he maybe he took her to the world between worlds and ahsoka and uh and, and daenerys are going to show up and it's a cross <laughs> um but there could be a chance to give some perspective uh a little more uh, you know john uh, not i'm not flashing back but john discussing that dealing with that processing some of the stuff at the end and maybe you could get um you know uh, one, one of the complaints i think is justified is fine 
love what happened with Danny. I get it. I get the story, but I wish I had a little bit more of her perspective. We didn't get to spend as much time with her on that switch. It does come across as sudden. I think if you track it back to season three, you see it coming or you feel it coming or you understand that it's uh, the way it goes. But I also agree with that. Um, um, she be, we become a, di we become distant from Danny. The moment uh, the bells happen. From that to the end of the show, uh, we don't. I don't think we spend an, enough or, or, or you know, uh, an important amount of time with her. So, getting any kind of understanding about that th through the characters and through the story would have value to me. It's not a yeah. fix; it's an extension. Absolutely, yeah. It's 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 an exploration of theme, an exploration of the fallout of character arcs, of for John something that goes with him all the way back to his earliest days uh, getting a shave for the dinner with the king is guilt this yeah. is this is a guilt-ridden character um now more than ever mm -hmm. him and Tyrion Lannister having made the decision for the entire world um to yeah. to protect them but through a dark deed he did love this woman he says that up until the very end so it's yeah. an unavoidable specter of Daenerys hanging over the show no matter what they do i would be stunned i would be shocked if there is a version of these scripts whatever they are um that is not inherently about that in in, in a obi invader type way you you have to and um yeah. even if it was we're gonna age kid up 30 years and he's gonna have white luscious hair he's still <laughs> gonna be thinking about that so I, yeah. I i do agree do i think that we're gonna get amelia clark in the show i think too early to say i think it's definitely yeah. possible show us i mean but but there's always a clever way i mean they got jason momoa back after you know for that scene with their the vision yeah. of, of their baby rego and like that was a powerful beautiful moment and that's the other thing is that john more so than aria more so than brienne more so than anyone we could pick up with is inherently tied into the fantastical elements of martin's world he yeah. has returned from the dead he is depending on who you ask, a Zora High, a prophesized yeah. being. Um, he has been all of these things. He's important to every faction, every side of the world, whether that's Targaryen, Stark, um, the, the free folk. Yeah. Um, you know, is this the story of the king beyond the wall trying to create a society over there? Sure, it could be, and it could be removed from Westeros entirely, but that still inherently ties to Mance. It ties to egret so this yeah. cannot escape the show that's a great way to to to, to phrase it. it can't escape uh um, and that's why i almost view this idea again or we'll say it again early development but i, I almost see this idea as, as opposed to any of the other ideas on there including house of the dragon coming out blood moon and it not going forward the animated shows all these things um this is, I look at it as, you know, that, you know, uh, uh, in, in Lord of the Rings, the films where that ends on fire and then the water's coming down and he's, he like dives his head into it. Oh, yeah. This is HBO diving their head into this post season eight world. Uh, the, the good, the bad and the ugly of that. It would be very, you know, would I just want a buddy cop uh, comedy of uh, Tormund and Jon Snow uh, up and up in the up in the snow? <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I want the, the added bonus, more Tormund. Absolutely a good thing. More Tormund and spending less money on everything else means Ghost can be in the whole season. Ghost, Ghost is Tormund, Ghost, and Jon Snow. Roman uh, setting up shop, uh, you know, who, falling in love. Who knows? I don't care. Uh, I'm excited about that. But yeah, it would be downright, at this point, from this distance, I would say downright weird to not even have the names of the people in his past or his family show up. Maybe, I don't know if he needs to deal with being Aegon Targaryen. I don't know if that matters north of the wall. I don't know if that matters to him anymore. But who is, am I Aegon? Is there a part of me that's Aegon? Is, is, um, am I all Jon Snow? Who am I now? It might be a big question over the series. And that would have to involve some of the names and the people from his past. Of course, and that's some of the stuff that I was immediately thinking about. My excitement is, you know, I, I should say too for people listening, I it's it's a thing where the cast is so large, everyone's gonna have their favorites. So maybe there's someone listening that like loves it as much as we do, but like this was their least favorite side of the story. Maybe they were like, oh, I want to see Tyrion, I want to see Brienne. Like I don't really care what's happening north of the wall, and that's totally valid for me. I realized at a point in the show that I am Jon Snow. Like, this is one of my characters. Like, yeah, this is one yeah, of the people yeah. where I'm like, oh, wow. Like, I on, on surface, funny levels that I always joke about, we only wear black. We're from the North. 
we're bastard children. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of like surface parallels. I, I have seen you rush forward when you shouldn't grab your sword and face an army by yourself. I've seen that. I did that. I did do that. That was in the uh, the you know the Domino's Pizza parking lot. Um, <laughs> but I yeah I I feel so connected to this character. So my excitement and my mind is going to rush in accordance with that. With that said, there are questions that are unavoidable. How mm -hmm. does the child of destiny prophecy question mark uh, deal with the fallout of what happened? How is he dealing with his second life? Because he was mythically, literally, and figuratively reborn at the mm -hmm. wall and at the Battle of the Bastards with the not at all subtle um, birth imagery that happens there with you know the the, the crowd of, of Bolton soldiers. So yeah. how how is he processing this post war? I mean, there's so much to explore there, but also. I think it would be a really safe bet to think that he is going to have to deal with some people, at least directly, because he does. He is happy, you know, for his little brother, Bran. Um, yeah. He is. He does kneel to him. And Bran tells him you were exactly where you needed to be. Like, what is in that relationship? I don't think that's the last time that those two men will speak to each other because Bran did have that belief in him. And how has that sat with him? And. Yeah. Now with him being, whether he's king beyond the wall or if it's just a no kings hangout, uh, let's just love each other up there. Uh, his sister now has a free and independent kingdom yeah. that he is attached to. And the wall is gone. Uh, is like what, what happens there? Is it, John, I need you to lead X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, how cute and tied in is this going to be? It's, it's all the potential in the world. Yeah, no, and, and and going a little bit into his arc and 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 what he, you know, I think it's a general statement, but I think he goes from this trying to find who I am, where I belong, and then I kind of need to be a hero. My one of my favorite moments is Mance Raider looking at him. This is what we've been talking on the show for a while now, and beginning of season three, going, "Oh, I know what you want to be. You want to be a hero." And then John having to redefine what that actually is going forward, uh, which is why I said this kind of child of destiny, um, um, perhaps turning away from it. That's a very general look at his arc and his theme. So, but I, the, all that to say, I love where he lands, um, and then how how he's going to deal with that, and if it is a pullback in, or what is your identity now? King beyond the wall doesn't at this point doesn't seem like he'd want that. That's no, I'm I'm retired. I've moved to Big Bear. I'm <laughs> I'm in a cabin. Leave me alone. Oh, yeah. um, so and it, it is is it as simple as that? I I, I can't imagine it is. Um, and there's got to be conflict. There's got to be stuff. This isn't um, you know even in the Obi Wan Kenobi show. It wasn't. It never was just going to be old man in the desert trying to figure things out. That that's the themes at play. It is a lot of what's driving the story. But there is action. There is conflict. It has to be. That's how you tell stories. So. Um, what do you do with that going forward? Which goes back, and I'll say it goes back to my original point. I'm a huge Jon Snow fan. Um, I, I have, you know, I have the shirts too. Um, I haven't fought anyone in Domino's parking lot yet, yet. Um, yeah. But that's where I, with this particular character, I am spending less time wondering about what he does going forward. Where Arya, I'm like, give me her sailing in the sh in the seven seas, nine seas, all the seas. Uh, what are the 11 C's now? The 13th, the number's grown. Have her find more C's, but have her uh, discovering who she is. Uh, you know, uh, real, I love the Maisie's quotes the other day of like, I, you know, I thought she was a queer woman. Uh, the Gendry stuff was, uh, I thought it was a prank. Was, you know, explore that. You have the character to go that of who, who, what is my identity? Who am I? Um, I, I wonder more about that. I get that. But we also don't know if, you know, maybe they didn't float this by Maisie. And she went, eh, I'm good. Um, we don't know that stuff yet where Kit was right. like, Let's give this a go. You know? And that's the other yeah. thing. I mean, and it's also funny to think about Kit. He's like, I went to Marvel. They gave me a sword and now I get my original sword back. Like, yeah. hey, like, uh, I'll never. Like, you know, now I'm thinking about it. This was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I do miss Longclaw. At the same time, you know, talking about that Arya stuff, I'm so glad you brought it up because that did feel, I think, not to speak for the entire fandom, but what's West of West felt like, like a backdoor pilot, like that last shot of her. I mean, I will just say the the entire inner cut three siblings montage makes me cry every time i i think yeah, it yeah. is perfect the crowning of sansa the ship everything um but aria's had forward momentum literally it yeah. was it was uh off triumphant i it, it connected visually of course to the end of season four going to bravos where she realized what that would mean now she's doing it 
of her own choices, not running um, like she was when she went to Bravos. And I, I love the parallels there. However, and I said this to, to Eric Monroe on Twitter, the difficulty there is that it would be whole cloth locations mm. and, and mythology and lots of stuff that perhaps the network doesn't want to create either a without Martin or, or Martin doesn't want to create himself. He doesn't want to define. There's a lot of factors there where with John, we have the North, the true North, uh, the, the kingdom of the North and everything that we've seen to play with potentially mm. Aria would require a lot of new and a loss of certain iconography on a business level. Yeah. Um, which is why I think you do the, is it Yeeti? Yeah, Yeeti, you do. Yeah. You do oh, ET right. animation, right? Like that yeah. feels much safer. Uh, whereas if we put Aria West of West, like, yes, Maisie Williams will draw a crowd. No doubt. That yeah. character has so many fans. I am one of them. But we would also be like, oh, kind of wish she was here. And they're, they might be trepidatious about so much new. It, it, I'm going to mention again, it truly would be Frazier moving to Seattle, right? So <laughs> <laughs> far the show. Yeah, no, uh, and I, this is not to suggest that it would be a bad business move to center series around Aria uh, at all. I don't want to suggest it at all, but yeah. uh, it is a little bit more of the stuff you're talking about. If you're looking at it just in terms of on paper with any kind of numbers, yeah, the 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 uh, Prince Caspian and the Voyage of the Don Treader journey forward to lands we've never seen would be fascinating. A great expansion of the story. Um, maybe it's a tough sell if Blood Moon and who know again we don't know. There's a lot of other rumors and reasons why that that pilot might have been picked up and budget might have been some of it. Who knows? We're not. I always say we're not in those meetings. Yeah. Um, but there was a little bit of that like thought of. Was it too far back? <laughs> we the castles aren't even built yet. Like there, there right. could have been something like that. Where House of the Dragon? Hey, hey, stranger on the street who kind of likes Game of Thrones. You have an HBO Game of Thrones hat. You buy corporate merch. Uh, where this was independent. Um, do you like dragons? Do you like it? Uh, like Dave Letterman said in Cabin Boy, do, would you like to buy a monkey? Would you like to buy a dragon? We got more of that <laughs> yeah. coming. We got yeah, more of that. We coming. got. Your yeah. throne. We're even. We're going. We're even going to add swords to it. How about that? And mm -hmm. uh, you're going to see the red keep again. We're going to have Starks and Baratheons there saying their names out loud, and we're going to possibly maybe we cut to Casterly Rock. Maybe we cut to Dragonstone, which is a very fair bet. I think we even have seen it already. Um, at least the yeah. beach. And yeah. it's like with Arya. Yeah, I, I want to make that clear too. Has nothing to do with Arya Stark. It has mm -hmm. everything to do with the fact that or Maisie or anything that yeah yeah sure. nothing at all. I just think that if I'm in that room, part of my concern or part of the concern I think would be well, with these characters we know where to shoot. We have X. We have you know Y. We have the wall. We can promote with X, Y, and Z. Um, we're able to connect him and Sansa with Arya. It would be one character that we have everything new that requires us to do infinitely more work. It requires us to go back to the drawing board on design. It requires George to slow down other things that we might want him working on, whether that's yeah. winds of winter or whether that's house of the dragon, whether that's Duncan egg. Um, that's, that's, I think is a way more tall order. And I think that it's in the same way that you have Din Djarin visit Navarro and Maldo Crace, but he's also going to visit Tatooine. Like yeah. you keep foot in. Um, yeah. which is, I think, just natural for the expansion. Like, everyone's loving Star Trek Strange New Worlds now, mm -hmm. but it came out of Discovery, and then we threw in Mr. Spock as well as some new characters, and I think that audience training is a big part of it. Yeah, for better or worse, for better or worse. And and uh, a couple things. First of all, you mentioned George R. Martin. I, as we've been recording here, I've been updating, refreshing, uh, his not a blog to see if he commented. And this morning at 9 14, Alden, he mm -hmm. commented on a new sword from Jalic Blades. That's right. You can get the replication of the blade Blackfire. He has yet to comment. We'll wait. I'm going to check my uh, check my debit card and see if I can. No, I'm not going to get a I'm not going to get Blackfire. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, George. Thank you, George. And so from this point, though, I want to I want to lead into this a uh, couple of discussions, a little bit more behind the scenes stuff, too. Uh, wild speculation, but yeah, talking about this Arya stuff, I mean, it's all intriguing. I, I would love a little book on that too, if, if mm -hmm. to hear that story. This isn't to say you, you and I, being Star Wars fans, we're living in this world of oh, it's 
It's just a show about a, a, a Mandalorian. Oh, wait, no, it's the expansion of uh, the post Return of the Jedi world. Uh, a Jon Snow show is probably not just him and Tormund having a turkey leg. So could buy, if it's not a limited series, I think Eric Monroe and Don Long both suggested this could be, you know, hey, maybe a limited series idea in their calls. Season two, maybe you are spending time with Arya. Maybe this does kind of, you know, Brianna Tarth shows up. There's a, there's a lot of possibilities, and I have no doubt that the book of Jon Snow could expand pretty rapidly as we follow these characters going forward, if they choose to. 100%, especially because development of a Jon Snow sequel and, and the headline Jon Snow sequel comes from conversations, comes from, you know, Hibbard's sources, but it could very well be a show called, you know, I, I jokingly was like the white wolf, like that, you know, what, what is the symbolism there? Like, it doesn't mean the show is going to be called Jon Snow. It could just be that Kit's going to be our, have the most screen time. And we are following up on everything. Or, you know, if he sends a Raven from his cabin at Mount Egret or wherever he is now, like, <laughs> I, I named this mountain after my girlfriend. Yeah, and his, <laughs> and his new his new free folk wife is like, nah, I'm not going for this. Yeah. <laughs> no, please. I'm not, I'm not moving in there. <laughs> no. Yeah, like like you know, you you could do those cutaways, and I think that it's true. Like we, we're in the age now of these eyes and characters. I mentioned Strange New Worlds; it's in its first season, and they already cast Kirk for the second season, so they are going to brush Picard, up against it. right Picard. Yeah, it goes from uh, old man in his winery to to expanding and extending to being and wrapping up some stories. Yeah. Next generation yeah. sequel, essentially, which, which I think is fine. And I and and I'm OK if, if, if you even if you want to say it cynically that oh, this is just season nine or anything like then great. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of us didn't would have loved to have two more seasons. George yeah. R. Martin wanted two more seasons. Uh, Dan and Dave just didn't seem to want two more seasons, which is their choice. Which leads me, um, and sorry if I'm cutting off some of your thoughts here. No, no. Free to Doug, jump back to any of them. Which leads to, you know, no names attached in terms of creative. Other than I'm sure if Kit Harrington was to show up, he'd probably be an executive producer of some, of some sort. No, oh, yeah. uh, Which could be an actual role or just a title. That's uh, a popular so, deal right now, isn't it? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Diego, uh, Ob uh, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan executive produced his own show. Uh, Ewan, um, Chris Hemsworth is an executive producer on yeah. Thor now. It's just that's starting to be game. a little bit of a standard. Yeah, name of the game, and you get invested, and you know, your name's on it, and you're leading it, and and all those kind of things. Uh, a little bit of the business side, of course, but yeah, um, um, no names, no names. No, you know, HBO so far, and George R. R. Martin. That's where we're checking. Is not a blog. It, it is pretty open about him being behind even the the the, the ideas that were pitched around and didn't go forward. Um, uh, I heard some from some folks in in town of yeah, I, I I'm putting together an animated package to go they want me to go pitch to George like his obviously whether he's involved on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with each individual project it, it doesn't matter it, it, there's got to be some sort of you'd think there's gonna be some sort of blessing however maybe this particular section of the world maybe legally he doesn't have to be I don't know I can't wait for some of those details to emerge and I can't wait for his thoughts on it um going forward when his own story isn't even finished is an interesting, interesting uh, uh, proposition to hit the man with, you know? Yeah. He gets an email like got any more notes question mark with a Jon Snow GIF attached. Like, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a really interesting, by the way, Ken was talking about me pitching my uh, Melisandre prequel, the red woman. Um, oh yeah. I'm, at I'm attached to that. To yeah. Watch. It's, yeah. Just, it's, 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 it's just, it's uh, just her just, living life doing her makeup and stuff just just yeah. appreciating her um but yeah it's uh it's an interesting proposition for sure especially considering you know there's lots of jokes over the years like is Jon Snow George's insert character like yeah. uh, you hear that a lot and um it's it's interesting because it's it's like what is the follow-up to from George's perspective because he has as we talked about uh, on the last episode uh, of Casterly like the it's the this is my story that he threw into his last blog post will this get the my story stamp uh or will this be the we're gonna call benioff and weiss and and for the record do i think that they would come back no no no, no. uh like if anyone is out there wondering i'm gonna put all my chips on no um the, for them yeah the only thing i would see uh benioff and weiss if there's any involvement having some sort of 
real hollow credit that executive producer not even yeah. like it's created by but just kind of uh yeah we're taking maybe some of the things they did we have to give them uh you know they, some they cast kit they hired yeah. kit and they did the yeah like it's it, not but, saying that they are the george lucas of this because that would be martin but even on stuff where there's zero george creations he still gets based on characters created by yeah yeah um so yeah. It, it could be yeah. one of those yeah I'm um yeah, but yeah, zero percent chance that they show run. I would say at this at the present moment, unless something shocking happens and they end up uh, uh, leaving the Netflix office with all their stuff in a box, uh, I, I don't think that this would happen. But it is an interesting thing, right? Because in, in on the film side of things, yeah, it's it's easy sometimes in these fandom punditry conversations to say, "I'd love to see X filmmakers take on this." It's a lot mm -hmm. harder to do that with showrunners. Because yeah. they put together rooms, because it's it's not as easy yeah. as just a, you know, yeah. it's not easy as saying Taika Waititi on Star Wars. Um, yeah. Who handles Jon Snow? I don't know. Peter yeah. Jackson. Like it's like it's so hard to just throw names out. It's uh, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, no, yeah, not not that I, not that I would think Jackson would do it, but yeah, a, a bigger name, someone like that coming in. And here's one name I'll throw out. I, you know. Um, is a good old Brian Cogman, who is the keeper of the lore, was the keeper of the lore on the show, the one who seemed to be most tightly connected to it, like needing, like they needed to bring him in here. What happens? What's the history here? He's mm -hmm. that guy, and and he he's attached and has been attached to some of the other prequels that none none of his seem to go forward. Uh, I, I've lost track of some of the ideas, um, and you know worked with Martin on some of those pitches and what have you. To what degree? I don't know. Is it just meeting in Santa Fe for a lunch, or is it something more? Um, that's a name I would be intrigued. Uh, I would. You would need a a bigger maybe showrunner type, a director type. I don't know, uh, but not to take anything away from Cogman's skills, but he would be someone that I would really trust to take the show world forward. I agree with that, and I and it is a question too of does do people that are not dan and dave that are also not on house of the dragon get brought back for tonal consistency or for relationships with kit for whatever like what is michelle mclaren doing right now does she come back and and join sort of the director stable because that is also something that we're seeing with this expansion right now is like we're creating these rosters um yeah. which is something that john favreau has has popularized a lot right now is to to bring together a stable of people um to kick things around that are like they're all doing this person's style but with enough flair of their own that that's that's really interesting to say it, it cuz it's um it's obviously not abnormal to have a bunch of different directors working on tv shows i mean sitcoms it's change can change weekly sometimes um but there's there's a different tone to the conversation around the Mandalorian and the Boba Fett directors. Uh, Kenobi just being directed by Deborah Chow, but her, uh, it, despite you know, great resume. Let's be clear, but emerging from Mando into into her, the own show with Kenobi, um, that be, I don't get that feeling from House of the Dragon. It's even though there might be you know the list of directors and all that kind of stuff. It's it's I think of Sapochnik and Condal, uh, and they have mm -hmm. a, a very interesting writers' room. Um, but yeah, with this kind of thing going forward, do you go? Do you not just bring a roll call of all star directors from the previous series, uh, but maybe some, you know, the Alan Taylors and, and the Michelle McLarens and, and, and some of the other directors who made an impact in that show and in that world, particularly some of the Jon Snow centric ones? I should have maybe gone through a list of that even before we got the air. Sorry, everybody. Um, and then also bring it in some some of those like, you know. The Bryce Dallas Howards, the Femi is the, the people who are like, cool, what can you do in this world and be part of this world going forward and developing it? And also, who's to say that, you know, we talk about Miguel on House of the Dragon, but does do they try to turn Miguel Sapochnik into a little bit of their John Favreau, uh, mm -hmm. Filoni type figure where it's like, hey, uh, we're going to roll on Jon Snow when House of the Dragon season two is wrapped, Miguel, will you come over and do a little hard home action? <laughs> uh, with Kit again, since you guys have been in the trenches together, um, mm -hmm. doing this type of stuff, doing these crazy shoots, you're the guy that understands this um, and was and was elevating what we were able to do cinematically and, yeah. and technically yeah. uh, throughout the thing. And Kit was at the forefront of each of them. Yes. Um, so it's like he is the key Jon Snow director in a lot of ways. Well, you no, know, I was, I was, even as I was saying that, I was like, uh, Spachnik might be the one, you know, especially especially from season five on. He mm -hmm. it might be that that Jon Snow guy. I think there's a lot of other names you could throw in that hat, but he merges 
time and time again is the one who who really helped elevate that character in in terms of learning about the character in battle. Yeah, and and also there's a there's a factor too happening a lot right now with things where where is the person who was in film school when Game of Thrones started that mm -hmm. can now give that legacy story that that is so good for uh, goodwill, so good for press, so good for the perspective. Where is that? that young person of color that young woman that was that was in film school that said oh game of thrones was essential for me yep. and now here i am you know it's it's also important to because you know you got like your alan taylors and your david nutters and those guys but they're uh mm -hmm. nutters you know, a good name yeah mm -hmm. not young uh they're not they're not young talent and yep. there, there's that element too and and kit harrington is a young talent and yep. john snow even if they kick this five years down the road he's still a young man this yep. is not Peter Dinklage. This is not uh, Lena Headey, uh, you know, one of those veteran actors. Uh, yeah. Not that I think we'll do the Undead Cersei project. Uh, I was just naming actors. I'll, uh, I'll pitch <laughs> that right now. The Undead Cersei. I want that story too. <laughs> Cersei from beneath the rock, a hand. Just <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's definitely an interesting thing. And again, television is so difficult, but television is changing. And yeah, well, no, but that, that, ex that excites me. Uh, that that you are in an era where you know, if say you're twenty. When Game of Thrones, the TV show begins, you're 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 around thirty and 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 growing, and so you are coming up. You're in the middle of your career. You're out of film school. You're doing things, and and I would love to hear from those kind of people on the shows. It's the same thing with the the sequel era is already um, in Star Wars. Uh, is we, we are already approaching ten years of the sale, seven years of Force Awakens. That is enough time to influence a new generation of creatives. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's th that person in high school and now they're, they're in, in a film program or something and force awakens was the thing. And, and to them, JJ Abrams is an older director, which is just such a weird thought. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely an interesting sort of time of, of the changing of the guard. And mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see what changes, even in terms of the filmmaking, in terms of the aesthetics, in terms of, um, how this is made presented the fact that it's a safe bet to assume let's say Jon Snow does go to series it it's going to be a HBO Max streaming project i would assume um since we're all fighting a streaming yeah. war right now yeah we are we are all in the streaming wars we are I, it's out you're here out there and um you know some uh, HBO kicks you down tries to bring the Robert Baratheon hammer down on Disney plus <laughs> It's at that point you're able to play with things that HBO, the channel, was not able to play with in terms of being able to make things differently in the age of digital production and not having to adhere to season lengths, episode lengths. Let this one's going to be 35 minutes, this one's going to be 55. We could just yeah. do whatever we want. That's a really interesting, um, really interesting way to approach things. And also, in a post, I would say seasons seven and eight world where they began to it to much controversy train audiences away from the you know see one through six was we're going to show you all the travel we're going to show you all of the getting from a to b then seven and eight were way more uh cinematic where it's like the travel yeah. happened off screen yeah you know we're here yeah i call those seasons the we've arrived uh seasons yeah um, is, is it going to be more of that yeah Fascinating. Something you said uh, in there made me, uh, made me think this. And I want to pitch this to you. Sorry if it's a little bit of a subject change. Uh, yeah. Going back even to what we're saying at the top, uh, I've been saying here on, on Cassidy Talk for a little bit now. Like I'm excited that you know, yes, it's it's corporations trying to make uh, money. No one that no one's a hero there. Uh, this is content wars. This is business. Um, and I guess as best we say, we we can reap the benefits of it if you choose to look at it like that. Um, this this IP, if you will, uh, I know that sometimes a dirty word. This George R. R. Martin world. Um, just makes a lot of sense to expand it. Uh, but there also at sometimes even for me, there's sometimes seems it seems a little weird it's not a star wars star trek um uh even lord of the rings uh, is is that starting to expand um uh, marvel of course which is uh, same thing with different beats but you know what i mean where sometimes i'm like well that's weird why would they do this and i keep going back to this no why wouldn't you why mm -hmm. wouldn't you there's so many corners to explore all these seven shows why not hbo be known as that's the game of thrones channel um it makes a lot of sense but also does it make any sense to you that i'm also kind of like it's bizarre. 
I think a lot of it, I think you're right to feel that it's bizarre. And when I, when I think about that, I also think about audience because yeah. everything that we named, whether it's Star Wars, Star Trek, Lord of the Rings, all, mm. what do all those things have? Marvel and DC, they're for families. Mm. And Game of Thrones, although I think it is fun family viewing, uh, it does not necessarily, uh, it's not a, come kids, I got a pizza, uh, I got popcorn. It's yeah. not like that. Game of Thrones family viewing is me and my sister yelling expletives as something crazy happens. That's what Game yeah. of Thrones family viewing is. And that's yeah. what I've talked about as as Casually Talk's going to be covering Rings of Power. Yeah. And that's in the discussion. I think mm -hmm. I mentioned this on an earlier episode. If I'm in charge of marketing Rings of Power, that's my move is yeah. Yeah. This, this is the fantasy adventure where we want the whole family to sit down yeah. because they don't they are competing but they don't need to be competing for the same people. And yeah. I think that with Game of Thrones expanding, it's strange because with Mandalorian going to Book of Boba Fett or going now to season three where it's going to feature way more Bo-Katan, it's mm -hmm. exciting to go to your kid and say, hey, remember her? Remember her? I just happen to have this here. Remember her? She's she's going to be showing up now. She's going to be showing up in the next yeah. thing. And, yeah. your, and your son and daughter can be like, hey, Game of Thrones does not have that. It's just adults some of whom that are angry talking about things that are kind of grim. Yeah. So it's, it's a way different culture as it starts yeah. to expand. Kids yeah, gather around. We're going back to Baelish's brothel this week. It's going to be great. Yeah. Alive, but his brothel is. Yeah. And that's the other thing is that it's, <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's death in star Wars and star Trek and Lord of the Rings, but lots of people, we talked about our, our friend, uh, Andres Cabrera, and you mentioned Baelish, lots of people lost, the character they maybe wanted to know more about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They right. lost yeah. the avenue that would have excited them for yeah. a spinoff. Maybe somebody was wanting to see Jamie Lannister put his life back together after the show, and that's impossible. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, I mean, I guess it's not impossible um, with magic out yeah. there, but still, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's a different beast, and so it has to expand differently. Yeah, no, I, I no, you, you're answering my my question here. It, it's in a good way here. It, it, it's it's because uh, it's not just a TV show to me. It's not even just a book series to me. It, it's definitely a world I love and a, and a world I like said I I learn from. I, I'm inspired by it. It challenges me. Uh, some of the things that happens to characters are, I think, supposed to hurt you in this series, and you're supposed to wonder why and what they what could have been done, what society could have done different to the characters, what they could have done differently in that society. There's a lot of those mm. things that stick, stick with me, and I know we're not alone. But to most of the people, this is just. It's not even Star Wars. It is just a, a a great TV show they watched and they moved on from. So that's sometimes where I pick up on maybe I pick up on that energy. Uh, Do you also our, think that because you're you know the self proclaimed map guy, you love that stuff, uh, <laughs> and in Star Wars, it's quite a thing to proclaim. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's maps are fun. Maps are cool. Maps are. Uh, in Star Wars, we have the unknown regions almost as a as a device. It's yeah, a place yeah. to put things and then pull them out later when uh, the right creator comes around and has the right connection. Um, we can tie that into Chiss space, wild space. Like that's more functional. Whereas with the Game of Thrones maps, my impression has always been like there are stories out there, but also Martin is intentionally leaving them vague. Do you think that it's yeah. a, it, you that you have like a, a sort of subconscious resistance to filling in some of those gaps like yeah oh, i don't really want to see a shy because the point of a shy is that it's a dark mysterious thing this world yeah no absolutely though i do want this red woman series you and i are both now co-creating on this episode this yes, week. yes uh give me that no uh yeah no there's a little bit of that too even going back to up to the, the top of john snow i think john snow his story is perhaps the most complete of the series right i mean it's not yeah. a great leap to say that and so there is part of me even as a diehard fan that's like good with just spending the rest of my life wondering uh and then we we know the dangers of expectations and i still want to commission some sort of psychological study of what happens when people get the answers to the things they wonder about their favorite characters and shows once mm -hmm. the answers come usually at the final seasons or definitely in the finales that's why you see a lot of people across many different shows not just fantasy stuff but uh true crime shows or or uh, even some sitcoms the endings always affect people and this one definitely affected people but then to go beyond that 
the expectations are are going to be potentially crushing to the series. The series might not be able to ever get out from under that weight. Uh, and that's maybe some of my trepidation too. Yeah. Trepidation. Yeah. It's all, it's also selfish, right? Cause we're going to be talking about it. And like if Jon Snow goes to series and then you and I are here in 2024 talking yeah. about the pilot, there's also going to be that. <sighs> now I have to hear other people talk about the pilot. Uh, <laughs> and which is also a thing that we didn't have to use to deal with. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so that's a factor too. That's a selfish factor, but it is reality. Um, yeah. So it's it's an interesting beast, and it's also, I think we're all dealing with, and to tie in with your psychological study thing, and we've talked about that before. That I think that endings do expose so much of how people are able to process journeys. You know, in that yeah, yeah. very cute Instagram caption way of it's about the it's about the journey, not the destination. Right, it is right. true, um, and how you process that. We're in an age now where nothing ever ends, and so we're. Also dealing with that societally and culturally, mm -hmm. I've had that realization with everything that I love that I'll never see the last Star Wars. I'll never see the last anything. Yeah. And that's just the way that it is. Um, I mean, we're wrestling guys. I thought that I saw the last Shawn Michaels match. That's my favorite guy. And then he went and did another one and, he, and it upended everything. So it's like, who knows? There's no retirements in wrestling, just no. another paycheck you need. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, great stuff. And I, I don't mean to spin it off into this philosophical thing, but it's been a part of the discussions around here at Castle Talk of, of uh, people's reactions to it there. Let's, as we wrap up the show here, let's have some fun. Uh, you and I both have uh, expressed excitement, um, questions, uh, intrigue, uh, slight confusion, but let's end with some fun. Um, characters, ideas, anything big, uh, general or specific that you would feel as though it would be just fun to see. I don't want to say want to see or need to see, but anything, any moment that comes to mind. Uh, my first thought and the thought I can't escape is Queen Sansa. Mm -hmm. I, I have to know what that relationship is like. And yeah, there's a lot to mine there between her and Bran as these two now sovereign leaders that... I'm assuming have a good relationship. I mean, yeah. he he yeah. let her break off and do her own kingdom, and seems like a nice guy. You know, kind of dry these days, but very nice. Uh, <laughs> a little somber, but yeah, 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 a little somber, and and you know, on the on the top of the subject of him, <laughs> as I've reminded people more than once, uh, Bran is not interested in governing. That's why he yeah. picked Tyrion. Yeah. He's busy magicking and looking for a dragon while Tyrion yeah. runs Westeros now. That's always been my read of the yeah. situation is that he, quote unquote, punishes Tyrion at the end by making him serve. But it's, you know, that's what the show had always been telling you. Yeah. The hand wipes. It's <laughs> that's where the power is. And Bran understands that he's the three eyed yeah. Raven. now. So do I want three eyed Raven stuff in the show? Doesn't really matter what I want. Uh, but do I expect it? Perhaps, you know, him and John are two. Not only are they Starks, but they're they're both tied to the mysticism of the world. Yeah, um, but the Queen, yeah, Queen Sansa though, I think is the a by proximity of just being the southern, you know, the nearest southernmost character. Uh, but I think that that relationship started to blossom as the story started to close. Yeah. So what are they like now after the fact? Their reunion um, after she treated him so terribly uh, when they're having that soup. And he's yeah. like, yeah, you were the worst. You kind of did suck. Uh, it's so charming. So, yeah, no, great stuff there. And one of the things that and, and I was thinking about, it and you kind of touched upon it, is, yeah, you know, you got Bran and and um, you know, Bran the Broken over there, and yeah, the search for Drogon. And, and if anything, like we're talking about Jon Snow being pulled back in, and maybe you think of another threat, or maybe you think of some political reason to come back. But this idea of, hey, are you having fun up there in the north? You and Tormund are enjoying those turkey legs and. And, uh, you know, meet new friends. But we think we've located Drogon. We think Bran has discovered this. And, and maybe you're the one to go go figure that out for us. And and and, and that yeah. means some sort of a mission. Because um, that would tie into a lot of things we're talking about with the character and, and processing what's going on and, and looking at the decisions that were made and, and what that could be. Um, because in my mind, I'm like, I can't imagine, I don't care if it's one season or five seasons. I can't imagine all of it being in the snow, literally with Jon Snow. Yeah. Uh, there's a yeah. wide open world. And we we love the idea of Arya exploring that world. Uh, who knows? <laughs> how, do, how am I going to get there? I need a ship. Well, my, my sister's got one. Um, yeah. yeah. Kit, Harring Kit Harrington signs on and he says, I'll do it, but we're going to Croatia. 
I am not shooting this entire thing up there. Okay. Well, jo jokes aside, that was literally one of the first things I thought. I was like, because everyone, including me, are putting are putting pictures in the thumbnails of you know, look at the you know, for those watching, yeah, very <laughs> miserable, cold John Snow. And you imagine Kit like, could I could I go to the beach? Can we go to the beach? Can yeah. we travel to beach town? Kit's like, uh, I got to do it, but there was dust everywhere, and it was a hell war zone. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I would like snow. I would like to just have a nice walk by a palm tree uh, yeah. that yeah that, that's an interesting thought too and I, I love what you said about if drogon does factor into the story because that is sort of their uh end of star wars rebels let's go find x sort of thing yeah. at the end of the show um drogon does have I mean, these these dragons are the show doesn't get into it as much as the expanded mythology does in, in the writings but it is there these are intelligent creatures they're not necessarily beasts he knows yeah. that john snow is one of his people that's told to you through the visual storytelling um of their of their uh pet, nice little dog pet moments where yeah. she realizes oh he's a dog dad i love this guy um those moments all the way up to drogon destroying the throne there's an understanding there that could be interesting to explore. He took his mom's body away to X, Y, Z place. Who knows if it's a shy, if it's uh, to um, somewhere she'd previously been in Essos, who, who knows yeah. what that, that means. But for John to have to tap into that side of himself again, into yeah. the Aegon Targaryen side um, is definitely interesting. Um, it, it, yeah, I don't suggest it. I only suggested it because the thought of just like looking where he was when it ended. Like, yeah, yeah to me, he'd be pretty. Hey, could you help rule the countries, the, the seven kingdoms or the six? King nah, I'm good. Hey, could you take over as king of the Beyond the Wall? Nah, I'm good. There's not even a wall. Um, hey, you left some paperwork at the at Castle Black. You want to come in? Nah, but <laughs> hey, Danny, Daenerys, Drogon, um, that big mystery and, and what that means to him is, is intriguing to me again. We try not to be attached to our own predictions and speculations. We want to be open to what the story is uh, that's presented to us. But that's something that's very intriguing to me. Of, of, of if I have any questions about yeah. Jon Snow and towards the end, it's how that affects him going forward and what that could be if it comes back to him. I agree. And I 100% agree. And I would tie in with that how the relationships continue, not just with his sisters or with yeah. his brother Bran, but also the new Grand Maester is his best friend. Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, Samwell keeping this knowledge, documenting this knowledge, writing a song of ice and fire um, yeah. and not putting Tyrion in it, um, mm -hmm. which well, actually, no, he didn't write it. He didn't yeah. actually write a song of ice and fire. He just presents it. Right. Um, he just he just brings the book in. I Sorry, Samwell. I don't mean to, to slander <laughs> you. Um, but it's Tyrion not being in it, that whole comedy beat. But still, his yeah. best friend who he bled with you know, these two young brothers of the Night's Watch that are now in these completely different positions. I don't interpret the end of Game of Thrones being I'm now going to isolate myself from my loved ones. Mm -hmm. I don't think that those are, I mean, some people do. Um, granted, there are people that think that Ray never leaves Tatooine again, and I think they're wrong too. Uh, yeah. But the, <laughs> but the, uh, I will add the, 100% wrong, but that's a that's just <laughs> different, different podcast. Um, but the, the the situation of he's going there because it's where he felt most free. I mean, that's what Torment yeah. says. And, and again, yeah, and, and yeah, punished, right? Banished, yeah. punished, banished. Yeah, yeah. Ban yeah, that banishment of like we told Grey Worm you were going to the wall whispers gray worm doesn't know there's no wall like it's just taking advantage of gray worm so he leaves yeah and by the way who do i want him to run into on his search for drogon gray worm would be a oh great, that would uh, be great, an great excellent thing. especially if gray worms hanging out on on uh the isle of north and he hears that yeah. john snow is at x place but yeah maybe they are sending ravens to each other hey i'm a maester can you tell me what you see up there yeah. He loves these people. Jon Snow leads yes. with love. Yeah. Uh, I don't see that as a bitter, I'm sad about Danny, don't speak to me. Yeah. 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 No, 100%. 100%. That, that to me presents present a big challenge. Other fun things. I, you know, Brianna Tarth, Gwendolyn Christie, getting more with her, that having some kind of, you know, uh, she's maybe got a job to do down at King's Landing. This I know, but have her. Yeah, I took a vacation. I'm traveling the world. Me and Pod are catching up. Any kind of fun thing like oh, that. Uh, Sir Podrick from, Payne. Podrick Payne. Sir Podrick Payne. I forgot about that. That's a great yeah, moment. The Dinklage of it all. Like he seems like someone that 
if there's reason for him to come back to any kind of character, he would. He also seems like the type to be like, I've done that. I gave my heart to that and I'm ready to move on. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and you could throw your cynical jokes in about a bag of money or whatever, but no, he's, he's the type of artist that I would respect if he's like, there's something left to tell here. I'm interested. I think he, I think he would do that, but uh, I, I'm not, I'm not counting on that one. I think it's some of the other characters that would show back up. I agree. Yeah. I think that Dinklage is sort of your, your Harrison Ford where like the, the phone call has to be really compelling. Um, the, the, the scene has to be really compelling, but then there's also your, your Liam Cunningham's and, and guys yeah. like that where, Again, who does Jon Snow have intimacy with? Who is who has Jon Snow established um, these important rapports and relationships with? And toward the back half of that series, Davos was one of his most trusted confidants. He was that that was the guy um, for him in a lot of ways. That believed you know, Davos is a believer. Davos is the kind of guy to me that treks all the way up beyond the wall to tell him in person, "We need you." Yeah, you know, like that's it's the type one of, those of Davos speeches. Yeah. Pardon me for saying, sir, but yeah, there's only one person that can find a dragon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I I'm still just, have my flea I'm bottom just, accent. Yeah, I'm just a crabber. No, I'm just a crabber. But uh, uh, pardon me. Yeah, yeah. Love that guy. Uh, sorry, your grace. Uh, he is a king, not a lord. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. the best. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, interesting stuff there. And of course, this whole series needs to be about the ghost of Stannis Baratheon coming back, and then I'm hooked, right? That's got no? Okay. Fair. Hey, Stannis still never saw a body. Stannis Baratheon beyond the wall. His hair is down to his waist. <laughs> thank He's you for keeping up my false hope. Yes. Thank big you. beard. Um, still an interesting directorial choice. I'm just saying. I, yeah. I, I have always wondered about it. Yeah. But it is a, it is a really, it's a funny bit. I mean, Stannis, it's just, I miss the height of Stannis fandom in Game of Thrones. Stan, Stannis so the Manus, the, 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 the amazing, one of my favorite Game of Thrones memories is at the end of season four when he arrives uh, yeah. to, to battle Mance. And I remember me and my sister cheering. And texting my friend, Stannis the Manus is here. Let me tell you something. That was the greatest week of my life. That was the week. <laughs> Every, everyone looked at me. And for three years, I had held the flame. I had my Stannis Baratheon shirt, which I still have in my closet. That was the week all my friends texted me and were like, you got to be pretty happy. And I was like, yes, I was right about him. After that, things got a little bad for Stannis fans. But, you know, it was a little dicey. Week little dicey like sometimes I, I i talk about how i love melisandre and she's one of my favorite characters and then people bring up shireen and i'm like look you know not her finest uh managerial <laughs> moment <laughs> so you know, sometimes you call for a hit and run when maybe should have been you, you know leave the bat on the player's shoulders i don't know you know make a bad decision but um we're uh we're wrapping up here all this has been a lot of fun I, I love chatting this uh chatting this stuff up with you here it's uh it's so fun and this is great news and uh, this is intriguing news it could go horribly wrong it, you could approach this with all the cynicism in the world and that would be your right and i wouldn't disagree with that it, it is it is an interesting decision of all the projects announced but it is also just fun because we are fans and there's so much horrible things in the world and why not have fun wondering about songs of ice and fire, all that I can't appreciate. I can't uh, sh uh, share my. Uh, you can't. Sh I, 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 I'm stumbling over my words. I'm almost emotional. Thank you for joining today. Thank you. I'm so glad it came together this way. It was very kind of them for them to drop the news when they did, uh, as opposed to what Lucasfilm does to you guys on Force Center, where they constantly just <laughs> to constantly just dropping it after the show. This was uh, needed, and on a selfish level, I am glad that I didn't have to wait till my forties to see my hero return. Um, there you go. That was yeah. a, a wonderful thing. Yeah. We hope, we hope, Early we hope indeed. that's true. It, 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 next week's casually talk could be uh kid Harrington declines. Uh, yes. Harrington project falls apart. Nice story. This, that, and we'll cover that and we'll cover what that might mean if it does happen. But for now we're going to hold out hope that this moves forward and we get some big answers. Uh, Alden, before we get on out of here, uh, let all the folks know where they can find you and your wonderful star Wars work. Yes, you can find me on Octo Radio Star Wars podcast, where currently we are in the throes of Kenobi, but there is also other stuff happening, like uh, Adam Christopher will be joining us on the show to talk about Shadow of the Sith, the great novel that you'll all be able to pick up in about 11 days, I think. So if you're a Star Wars fan, come on over and listen to me talk about that stuff. We also do a Rebels rewatch, which is happening um, also on a show called The One and Done Film Club, which is on a little bit of a hiatus right now, but we've got the gears ramping up again on that and uh, doing radio stuff 
if you awesome. want to talk to me about Heim, you can hit me up. Let's talk some Heim. My one of my favorite rock bands of all time. Absolutely, indeed. Which, speaking of, uh, if you'd like uh, to hear some music and hear me do my old DJ stuff, uh, and I do mean rock and roll DJ, not a party club DJ. Uh, follow me over on Mixcloud with Pop Rock and Radio. We have live music shows, a lot of fun. It's an old style radio show, indeed. Uh, you can follow me at Ken Napsock. Go to KenNapsock.com for information. All the other things I do, including my book Why We Love Star Wars, still out there, still going strong. They got a Father's Day deal if you act now on that book and as always thanks for listening to casualty talk or watching on the youtube channels we try to build out both uh the podcast has been going strong for a few years but man we're picking up some speed as we race towards house of the dragon uh lord of the rings rings of power and beyond uh we'll go beyond the wall with john snow as well uh you can follow me at ken Napsuck. like i said the show doesn't have a show as a facebook page but no uh, twitter page uh because i'm just tired of logging into different profiles but you can follow <laughs> more drive media at m drive media where we tweet out about the show use a hashtag hashtag, hashtag casterly talk man i've been talking a lot today uh so you can join the conversation on the show that is it for now we'll see y'all next time here on casterly talk <laughs>